Hey, I'm Lynn, and this is CS Connect, and today we're talking about heaven. It's really interesting that Christians and non-Christians all seem to be intrigued by heaven. Everybody wants to go there, and everybody wants to know what it'll be like when we get there. And yet the reality is the Bible leaves a whole lot of gaps in this conversation about heaven. Matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it says this about heaven. Uh, that is what the scriptures mean when they say, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. It's as if scripture is saying, look, whatever you would imagine, whatever you would dream up, heaven is way, way, way better than that. And the truth be told that even if God were to attempt to explain it to us, the wonder of heaven is so much beyond anything that we would be able to get our minds around. It'd almost be like trying to explain to a three-year-old how the space shuttle works. There's just no way for them to completely understand it. And God says that about heaven. I, I could try to tell you, but you wouldn't be able to comprehend it till you get there. So what does the Bible say about heaven? What are the peaks that it gives us into this incredible, incredible place? Well, here's a few. Uh, the Bible tells us that every single tear will be erased. That as we get to heaven, whatever regrets we have, whatever moments we look at and say, boy, I wish that would have been different, those will all be gone. We won't live with that regret hanging over our lives anymore when we're in heaven. Uh, we'll live eternally. Uh, there is no end to heaven. It goes on for eternity. Uh, the Bible tells us there's no temple in heaven because you and I don't have to go somewhere to meet with God because God will be present with us there in heaven. All wrongs are going to be made right. So we, so often in this world, we look for justice. We look for things to be made even. And the reality is this world will always disappoint on that account. Things will not be set straight till we're in heaven. But when we are, when we are, everything that's been wrong, everything that's been unfair is going to be set to right. Uh, scripture tells us there's no night in heaven. Matter of fact, it even goes further to say there's no sun and there's no moon because the glory of God is so radiant that there is no need of artificial light in heaven. Uh, it tells us that we're gonna have perfect bodies. I mean, how amazing is that? Because it's been a long time for me since I had a perfect body, if ever. But scripture says that when we're in heaven, we're gonna have bodies that don't feel pain, they don't get hurt, they don't get cancer, they don't wear out or get old. We're probably all gonna be 22. How fun is that? Uh, Bible tells us that uh, we will know our loved ones in heaven. So often I get asked by people, hey, when I get to heaven, am I going to know the people I loved? And scripture is just really, really open and confident to tell us, yes, when you get to heaven, you're going to know your loved ones. I'm not even sure heaven would really be heaven if we didn't know the people uh, that we loved while we were here on earth. And then it tells us that uh, the architecture of heaven is out of this world, uh, that there are streets of gold that are so pure, they look like they're transparent, like glass, that there's walls around heaven made out of jasper, there's gates to heaven made out of a single pearl. I mean, it's just incredible and beyond anything you and I can believe. And maybe, maybe most importantly, is that when we die, Scripture tells us that we immediately go to heaven. There is no resting place. There's no place of soul sleep before we actually get to heaven. Actually, the moment a Christian passes, they're immediately ushered into the presence of God. They're in heaven. Matter of fact, 2 Corinthians uh, talks about this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, here's what it says. For we live by believing and not by seeing, Yes, we are fully confident, and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies. He's saying, look, I, I'd rather not be living here on earth right now. I'd rather be passed on. I'd rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. And it's just absolutely clear that the moment a Christian passes, they're immediately ushered uh, into the presence of God. But despite all those things the scripture tells us, there's still some big holes in this conversation about heaven, such as what are we gonna be doing while we're in heaven? And we know that we're gonna be giving praise to God and it talks about singing our praises to him and bowing down before him in worship. 
But what do we do after the first thousand years of having a church service? And, and I'm a pastor, but I'm just telling you, I don't know that I want to have a never-ending church service. So what else do we do besides praising God? And the Bible also tells us there's no marriage in heaven. So what does that mean about relationships? How will we relate to each other? And what will that be like? And then will there be jobs in heaven? Or will we just be sitting around? And yet it seems like when God created the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, in that perfect setting, they had responsibilities and jobs. So what would jobs even look like in heaven? And then what about animals? Are animals in heaven? Are they the animals that used to live here? Are they different? Are there animals? Lots of holes for you and me. So why would God leave gaps? Why would God tell us a little bit, give us a peek behind the curtain of heaven and not tell us the rest of the story? And I think you and I get a clue from the Apostle Paul, because scripture says that the Apostle Paul was actually granted the privilege of seeing heaven, and seeing heaven forever changed him. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse one. You gotta follow along a little bit. You probably haven't heard too many preachers preach about this text, because it's a little bit strange, but when you unpack it, it gets to something really, really exciting. So here we go, this is Paul writing. Here's what he says. This boasting will do no good, but I must go on. I will reluctantly tell you about visions and revelations from the Lord. I was caught up into the third heaven 14 years ago. Now here, don't get worried about third heaven. You gotta understand the Greek culture in which he's writing. The first heaven was just the sky that you and I see where the birds fly. And there, they designated the second heaven being where all the planets in the universe are. And then the third heaven was what we're talking about today, this place where God abides. And so he's just being clear to his audience, I'm not talking about flying around in the air, I'm talking about being with the Lord. So I was caught up to the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether I was in my body or out of my body, I do not know, only God knows. Yes, only God knows whether I was in my body or outside my body. I do not know, but I was caught up into heaven to paradise and heard things so astounding that they cannot be expressed in words, things no human is allowed to tell. That experience is worth boasting about, but I'm not going to do it. I will boast only about my weakness. If I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so because I would be telling the truth. But I won't do it because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond that which they can see in my life or hear in my message. Now here's the thing that I think is so powerful about this. The Apostle Paul says, God gave me this opportunity to see for a moment what heaven was gonna be like. And what you and I discover in the writings of Paul is that this experience for him of seeing heaven forever changed him. Before this, Paul is a guy who's on a mission. He is absolutely laser focused on the idea of taking the gospel to the Gentiles and developing and creating churches all around the world. This guy is absolutely focused. He's on a mission. Once he sees heaven, his language changes and he begins to say, I can't wait to get out of this world. I can't wait to be done with this and to be able to go to heaven. The only reason I'm staying here, Paul says, is because you need me to stay here. But I, I just cannot wait to go back to what I had a chance to see. Bottom line is simply this. If God were to tell you and me everything that's in heaven, we'd be dying to get there. We'd be so unfocused on living our lives in this world that we'd be no earthly good because we'd be so heavenly focused in our lives. That's how incredible this place is that we know only a little bit about. It's called heaven.